Hi, in this slide I want to review the 13 maxims that Madsen uh, identifies through her many years of teaching improvisational theater and saying it doesn't just work for theater, it works for life, and I would contend that it works for the business place too. So her first maxim is say yes, as opposed to, well, I don't know, let me figure out what's wrong with that idea. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to say, yes, I'm in heart, mind, and soul for the next four years. In other words, you might say, well, sure, I, you know, how on a quick and dirty, simple, you know, scratch the surface, how, what, what can I do to help here? If, if I could give you 20 minutes of time, you know, how, uh, in, in, count me in. In other words, if you want to, you can upfront contract and, and say, I'm in yes for a pound, not a ton type of thing, as opposed to sort of saying, well, what's wrong with this idea right off the bat? Uh, the second thing is that when we jump in to work with any and everybody on something, uh, don't prepare. Uh, just show up. And part of the idea of, oh, okay, well, we're going to get together. Well, I don't want to waste anybody's time. We have all these anxieties. We want to make sure that people think we're smart. We have the illusion that we can be very knowledgeable about something that no one's ever done before. We feel like we have to be in control. So to let ourselves off the hook and say, wait a minute, this isn't about knowing the right historic answer as we learn, you know, algebra in school or something, or we're regurgitating uh, Newton's phys laws, three laws of physics, but rather it's about learning uh, our way along a, a, a new path that where no one else has been before. So we can't, can't know it all. And uh, really from a control viewpoint, if we just have sort of general boundaries, that keep us, you know, in the ballpark, that's good enough. So, and three, when, when, you, when we just show up, that's also part of the idea of, of fast, uh, or there is, there is, there is, there is a genius in being bold. As soon as we start to do something, other people move and shift, and we start to get inertia going, and good stuff happens. Uh, the next point is when we first start doing something, just start anywhere. A lot of times we'll say, okay, uh, we're going to do this big thing and, well, let's make a list of all the things we need to do and what should we do first because we don't want to do the wrong thing second or third. The truth of the matter is, you know, if, 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 if we have to do a lot of stuff, let's just start picking stuff up here there. Oh my gosh, this, this house is a total mess. Let's clean it up. Okay, well, let's just start here. In other words, don't get all hung up about big long lists and what has to be first, second. If you just start to do stuff very quick, you start getting momentum. So you don't paralysis analysis. And as you do stuff, you can always dynamically say, all right, when we get closure on this little subset, let's then go jump to something that appears to be more important now that we're in here doing it. So to a certain degree, logical order and progression will emerge by just getting going. The point five is, is that when we show up to just start doing something, have no illusions that you're going to be perfect and expert. You've got to be the best. Just say, you know what? In fact, I, I plan on being pretend, purposely slow and thoughtful, mindful, just zen. Yeah, I want to be in flow about it. I, I you know, I just want to be average. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not threatened by any of that stuff. And that allows me to show up, get going, start anywhere, all those things. And over time, we'll pick up speed and figure out what makes sense in time. Uh, and all these things are tied together. Her next maxim about paying attention, that ties in with my idea of flexibility, where you have the guy, the 360-degree radius of green zone as opposed to being a very narrow focus red zone. If we just start looking around because we've, you know, we've showed up, we're in the game, we're doing stuff, other people will do things. <laughs> For all I know, they... I'll say, well, here's what I'm doing. They misunderstand me. They project something else on me, and they start doing something totally different. But it's cool. And actually, because it, it also is shaped by the environment, it's like, well, that's cool. Oh, well, didn't you say this? I said, well, no, I, I didn't say that. You totally misunderstood me, and you're doing something else, which totally revealed something important because, of course, we're in the right space. Uh, and when we pay attention, of course, we're paying, to, paying attention to the facts, not our myths, our, our preconceived uh, notions or habits, whatever. Um, her concept of stay on course would suggest that, of course, we have a vision, uh, a mountaintop that we're moving towards, like 
Lewis and Clark, we're, we're going to go west. We're going to keep going west till we can't go west any further. Presumably, we're running an ocean or something. So, um, you know, just stick with it as opposed to getting distracted and taking off in different directions. Her idea of wake up to the gifts ties into my idea of being um, uh, flexible uh, and seeing everything as fun. So when we have a mistake, a setback, we don't get angry because we're not perfect because you can't be perfect the first time you're doing anything. And even if you get to the point where you're black belt fourth degree, you can see things that would help you get to black belt fifth degree. Not that anybody else would notice or care. but. So the idea of whatever happens from the outputs, we're just say fascinating. So if we can see things with a non-judgmental, open, positive, this is fun, let's look at it 360 degrees, we're going to start to learn a lot more faster than if we get all upset because we're not doing things perfectly the first time. And sort of a summary point here is, of course, make mistakes, please. Um, that's, you know, totally overlap with what I've talked about so in, in my nine F's. Eleven, act now. We've, we've heard that too before. Goethe's comment about there's 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 genius and boldness because when we just move and act, the world moves and changes with us and stuff comes out of that. Um, but these are very important. I love these these two maxims at the end, which is that, you know, as we do this, we're working with one another. And so no matter what anybody else says, we say yes and and we can add ideas. We don't say no. We don't nitpick. We don't take it, hijack it, take it in a different direction. We're just trying to help each other all muddle along, moving generally west. And to a certain degree, we're enjoying the journey, the, the day, the direction we're going, the scenery, and so forth, because it's all new. And it is fascinating. So she has a very enlightened approach uh, with these two maxims and good stories that are worth uh, worth reading. So it's a it's a very it's a gem of a book. It's very small. It's pithy. Um, it's uh, it's very wise. And so I can't recommend the book enough. Thank you.